Hi guys, it's Elisa Rose here, and today I wanted to talk a little bit about how to teach your dog to retrieve. Um, I think that, uh, you know, a lot of my videos usually focus on helping dogs work through fear issues or anxiety or aggression, but obviously something like this is actually really beneficial to your relationship because it can be a great relationship builder. It can be a great um, way of getting your dog to problem solve. Um, and to think, especially when they might be a little bit more excitable. Uh, and, um, and it's just fun. Uh, <laughs> so a couple of tips um, for those that might be struggling with something like this. Obviously, if you have a golden retriever or lab, some dogs just really seem to get this very naturally, but that is not the case for all breeds. So, um, so, you know, some breeds might be really interested in chasing after a toy. Um, they might chase after it, they might grab it, they might then go kind of like, oh, sorry, be, move off to their own, um, to their own area, a shady spot or back to a dog bed to go chew on it. They have no interest in bringing it back to you. So in order to teach them to bring it back, I'm going to give you guys a couple of tips. Number one, when you're starting this off, choose a space where um, you kind of have a little bit more of like a runway to work with. Um, and this could be like a, a long kitchen, it could be a hallway. I'm on my, on my front porch right now. Um, so the idea being that there's just, you know, it's, it's just a more confined space. Um, and there's not extra dog beds and things like that for the dog to go run off with. Um, you can also pick up like other toys or things like that that might distract your dog and you can kind of take them out of the picture so that it's easier for your dog to focus on you. Um, the next tip is really you could teach your dog to retrieve anything you want. Let's see if I can get B to bring me back this dumbbell right now. Okay. All right, you can teach your dog to bring you back anything you want. With my other, with Fritz, with my Basset uh, lab mix, I like to teach him to bring me my keys. We do um, key retrieves and we do key finds and that sort of thing. So it can be whatever you want. Um, however, you might find that it can be easier to teach your dog to bring something back um, if they already are interested in that item. So a lot of times like a squeaky tennis ball is going to be a little bit higher value for most dogs. Um, and then the other benefit here is that you can have two identical toys. So if you noticed before, I was actually reinforcing Beatrix for bringing me back the blue dumbbell. Okay, girl. <laughs> um, but, uh, but what if, what if your dog doesn't want Thank you. Um, uh, what if your dog doesn't want food? What if um, what if your dog is really only interested in the toy? So the best thing that you can do there is that to then actually teach your dog to do a trade for an equal um, value item. All right. So that means you can have two squeaky tennis balls. <laughs> Um, and, um, and then you can teach your dog to trade. This is not going to come easily to every single dog. This is actually a skill in and of itself, teaching your dog to swap one item for another. Um, but um, again, the best way to do that is in a more controlled situation. Let's see if, um, let's see if she'll actually go for this toy here. Good, and then when she brings it back, instead of giving her food, the reinforcement is throwing the other ball. <laughs> oh, it got it got trapped. Um, <laughs> good girl. Um. So. Um. So the idea is either way we're doing we're doing some trades here. I'm either reinforcing her with food that is <laughs> desirable to her, so she just the ball rolled un, um, underneath the 
the, through the rails over there, and so she just jumped um, off the deck to go get it. Um, I wonder if she'll bring it back. B, come. Come here. Come on. And she did. She got it. Good, my, my good little retriever. <laughs> good girl. Um, <clears throat> so, um, uh, all right. There's, there's one other thing that I don't know if you guys noticed um, about my little setup right here. Um, good girl. Um, and that's that there's this red map behind me. And if you've watched any of my other videos, a lot of times I'm really big on using mats. And I've done a lot of foundation work with Beatrix on the red mat. Um, there's a lot of value built up for the red mat. So if you ever notice when you're playing with your dog that they seem to always want to gravitate back to a particular space, where they are running back to their dog bed or running back to a shady spot or something like that, or to, maybe to their crate if they love their, their crate. Um, we want to, I think it's, it's really helpful then to actually create a situation where we have a valued space that they want to bring it back that just happens to be positioned right next to you. Um, <laughs> um, <clears throat> She's pretty cute. Give her, give her a thumbs up if you think she's cute. Um, uh, <clears throat> so my that my mat is that valued place for Beatrix. Um, I can position it right next to me, right here, um, and it increases the probability that she's wanting, gonna want to bring it back. Um, Um, so this is, this is really helpful to be thinking about. This is something that trainers call, call antecedent arrangement. The way that I've created my setup right here increases the probability that I'm going to be getting the behaviors that I want to be getting from my dog, which in this case is not just chasing after the toy, not just picking up the toy, but also bringing it back to me and dropping it like she's doing right now. Um, so everything about this setup right here increases the probability that she's going to offer that behavior. Once I can create a situation where she's offering that behavior, where I'm able to create a reinforcement history for that behavior, then I can begin the process of generalizing that behavior to different environments and different contexts and different distractions. I can use, I can teach her to retrieve different objects. Um, getting the behavior is the first thing. Um, and the most important part of this entire equation. Spend more time just building up a really strong history for, um, for the, your dog bringing the item back to you and dropping it. And then after that's been established for one, two, three weeks or something like that, then you can begin the process of, of going back um, and trying to see if you can get your dog to offer the same behavior in your backyard, um, you know, at the park or you know, whatever, whatever the case is. <laughs> Good girl. Um, all right, so figure out what you are going to use for um, your trades. I guess one other point before I, I go is that if, if you actually notice for Beatrix, I have a system of reinforcement that's been created here um, where honestly, all, any of these items can be interchangeable. I can get her to chase the ball um, so that she can get another ball. She'll bring me back that ball B. until she gets distracted. Bree, get the ball. Good girl. And I can reinforce her with the dumbbell. And she will bring me the dumbbell in order to get some food. So that's called a system of, of reinforcement where it's not just relying on any single type of reinforcement. There's a lot of different things that are supporting this behavior here. Um, and that makes for a really solid behavior. Good girl. All right. So if you guys have questions about this, if you try it out, um, see if you can create a little um, training stage for your dog. Um, things that you'll need are um, Something that they'll want to retrieve, you can either use two equal value toys um, or you can also use um, just one object, but maybe also some high value food. Um, you'll need an enclosed area where there's just not a lot of different things competing for your dog's attention. 
Um, and if you've been doing any of your training on a training mat, you can use your mat also um, in order to entice your dog to come back to, um, to you, to come in closer proximity to you. All right, let me know how it goes. If you have any questions along the way, let, let me know. I'm always curious to see how um, these exercises work out for different people. And uh, yeah, I'll see you. I'll see you for your next uh, training training video soon.